lose last night, and it's largely because they have a major problem with the fifth spot in the rotation. We'll talk about how in the world they got here, how the Phillies front office has let this problem go this far, and what they need to do to fix it, as well as a milestone moment for a Philadelphia Philly and a callback to last year. All of that on today's episode of Locked on Phillies. You are Locked on Phillies, your daily Philadelphia Phillies podcast. Part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. Yes, this is Locked on Phillies. I'm Connor Thomas, your host. Happy to be here with you, hosting Locked on Phillies for the second straight season. Credentialed Philadelphia Phillies media member. Uh, you can hear me on the radio, television, everything in the Philadelphia market. So glad to be with you. And Locked on the Phillies is part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. Today's episode is brought to you by Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code Locked on MLB for $20 off your first purchase. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed go ahead and check out our friends at game time uh and uh, you can get tickets when the philadelphia phillies come back from this west coast road trip but it didn't start off too hot last night in arizona against the diamondbacks we'll talk about what exactly went on in the game but they ended up losing uh it looked like they won for a second late because cody clemens hit what was called a home run on the field uh that would have been given the philadelphia phillies the lead with two strikes and two outs in the bottom or in the top of the ninth inning but Unfortunately, that ball was foul. We'll go through the game in the next segment. But the ultimate issue is the Philadelphia Phillies got torched by the Arizona Diamondbacks offense, despite being up 5-1 to one at a point in the game, because it was a bullpen game. And the Philadelphia Phillies did not manage um, Sunday's game well, and it led to not managing Monday's game well. And I can't totally fault Rob Thompson. Now, what I can fault him on is using – in a game where you had five innings of two hit ball from Taiwan Walker, or the Sunday's game against the Dodgers, uh, going to the bullpen and using Gregory Soto, Sir Anthony Dominguez, Jose Alvarado, and Craig Kimbrell all in that game, knowing you had a bullpen game coming up the next day. Uh, that, I mean, I get trying to win the series against the Dodgers and everything, and they did, but man, I would have loved to see some of those guys available yesterday, considering that you had a four run lead early on in this one. But my bigger issue is with the front office. Uh, the names of guys that pitched yesterday, I just want to go ahead and run through uh, who was on the mound for the Philadelphia Phillies yesterday in lieu of having a major league caliber starter. Uh, last night against the Arizona Diamondbacks, here are the names of people that pitched for the Philadelphia Phillies. Matt Strom, he's been a starter at points this year. I actually really like Matt Strom. He had another rough outing last night. Uh, He's not going great right now. Junior Marte, probably a fringe major league pitcher. Dylan Covey, not a major league pitcher. It can't be out there. It's just not that good. Andrew Vasquez has been good at points this year. He's a lower level major league reliever. Jeff Hoffman, a lower level major league reliever. There's not a plus pitcher that threw yesterday for the Philadelphia Phillies in a game that they put up eight runs. I don't know how it's possible that Dave Dombrowski in this front office has not addressed the fifth starter position. And you brought in Dylan Covey nearly a month ago at this point, and he's been terrible every time he steps on the mound. And you keep trotting him out there. The guy is not a major league pitcher. He's not. You are, you're a team with championship aspirations and a giant payroll, and you're letting Dylan Covey tank it because – you won't find an option that's realistic as a fifth starter. There are so many options for the Philadelphia Phillies that I'd rather see them employ than going bullpen game every five games. Uh, it, it's negligent to have an offense going as well as our – I mean, that should have been another win for the Phillies. That should have been their eighth win in nine games. That should have gotten them back to 500. You should have made up another game on the Atlanta Braves in the NL East. But instead, you're spending it losing because you are throwing out a bullpen game when you don't need to be throwing out a bullpen game. I know Bailey Falter was rough to start the year. Guess what? Bailey Falter's better than Dylan Covey, and he's better than a lot of the guys that you trotted out yesterday on the mound to pitch against the Arizona Diamondbacks. It's time for Bailey Falter to come back, possibly. Uh, Griff McGarry is 24 years old. He's down in the minor leagues. He's a good pitching prospect. We've all been waiting to see him. Call him up. Give him an opportunity. I'd rather see a young starter than a reliever that we know can't pitch at the major league level. Uh, Mick Abel. Uh, who I mentioned in a tweet yesterday, I got a lot of 
uh, blowback on that, saying, oh, he's not ready, this, that, and the other thing. I get it. He's in double A. He's got like a four-something ERA. That would be a jump. Bottom line is he's highly touted. You drafted him high up. Okay, Mick Abel is a former first-round pick. He's a guy that you expect to be part of this organization at the major league level at some point in the future. I know it's risky to call a guy up that young, being that I believe he's either 21 or 22 years of age, but you have an opening in the starting rotation. You need a starter. You have starting pitching prospects. You don't call them up. I don't get it. On top of that, there have got to be serviceable starters free agent-wise around Major League Baseball. I mean, there just have to be. Guys that are built to throw you five or six innings and not two or three innings and then lead you to six innings of bullpen ball. The Phillies bullpen has been good in normal games. If you get six innings from your starter, the Phillies bullpen is nasty. If you get three innings from your starter, you're going to see a couple guys in the bullpen who could implode, and that's every bullpen in baseball. No one has like seven dominant relievers. The Phillies have three and a half right now. Alvarado's been incredible. Kimbrell's been incredible. Uh, and then Soto and Dominguez, I'll combine them to make them another one. But you've got an opportunity to get out of games where your starters give you something. Yesterday, though, you can't throw the whole game as a bullpen game. There aren't enough talented guys back there, and you're basically punting on possible wins. It was an awesome opportunity, especially because of what we're going to talk about coming up in the next segment that happened in the game. Uh, and a great individual achievement uh, for one of the Philadelphia Phillies. If you didn't stay up to see it, you know, you're going to you're gonna hear it uh, coming up. But uh, it's on the front office for not giving Rob Thompson a viable option. It really is. It's I can't put this on Thompson. I will put Sunday on him for using too many of his good relievers in a game. I don't know that he needed to, but. Bottom line is, if I'm a manager, I'm calling Dave Dabrowski in the morning. I'm calling Sam Fulton in the morning. And I'm saying, guys, we can't win with what you're giving me every five days. You see what I do the four days that I have an actual starter? Give me somebody. I don't care if it's a kid getting called up. I don't care if it's a free agent signing of someone who's uh, at the major league level already or has pitched recently at the major league level and, I don't know, might just be a little bit on the back end of their career. Like There are options out there to just – ignore the problem and go out there every five days with a bullpen game that consists of Matt Strom and whoever else shouldn't be at the major league level is crazy considering this team's potential and how well they've been playing lately. It's just like you're killing your own team's momentum by doing that. And that's unacceptable. It's almost like you're fighting against winning ball games. Like last night, the Philadelphia Phillies made a decision to, start, to have a bullpen game that led to them directly losing that game. They're making decisions that are costing them baseball games. And it's a very obvious one that the whole fan base sees. So go ahead and make the adjustment. Change it because it's unacceptable. If the bullpen game comes back up again in five days and I see Matt Strom out there again or anything like that, Nick Nelson, uh, any anything that's not like a bona fide major league starter, even if it's someone who's washed or if it's a like if it's a call up, I'm going to lose my mind if they go bullpen game again in five days. Uh, Oakland – Against the Athletics, like that's my villain origin stories. They go out and they face the the Oakland Athletics, who have actually been really good lately. They've won six straight. Uh, but they face a team that's supposed to be not very good. You just put up like seven or eight runs. You lose 10-7 to seven because you threw a bullpen game and one of the worst teams in baseball absolutely rakes against you. And then I slowly descend into insanity uh, because this team – isn't trying to win. I, I don't know. It's almost like a tanking strategy when you throw out a bullpen game with what the Philadelphia Phillies have been doing in those spots. So a change needs to happen. I don't think at all that Dave Dombrowski is a bad front office member, a bad president of baseball operations. Uh, I don't think that remotely. I think he's done a great job here. I think he's going to continue to do a great job here. This is just, it's uncharacteristic of him to not aggressively go pursue an option to replace uh, to replace the bullpen game every five days. So I need to see it coming up, or uh, I'm just going to be very, very upset with this game. We got an opportunity, though, to bounce back. The Phillies do, rather. Tonight, 9.40 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. They'll take on the Arizona Diamondbacks again. Uh, first pitch, again, 9.40 p.m. Eastern Standard Time tonight, so a late night one. Maybe you're in bed. You don't want to watch the TV while you're in bed, but you want to listen to something while you go to sleep. Well, Go to the SiriusXM app and search Phillies, and you'll be able to listen to every pitch of Phillies' hometown radio broadcast of tonight's contest. Should be another good one. Phillies are slightly favored. We are going to talk about that coming up uh, 
as well as what happened last night in a incredible individual effort that should have resulted in a win did not, but we'll still give uh, this player their flowers anyway for uh, what they were able to do last night. So we'll discuss that coming up as we continue locked on Phillies. All right. I want to tell you about my friends over at the game time app. Listen, I'm going down to North Carolina later this week. I'm driving down Thursday I'm going to be down in the Raleigh area. So I was looking through and I was like, what's fun to do down there in Raleigh? Because I'm going down on a golf trip. But, of course, you can only golf when it's light out. So we're getting some tee times and we're playing four rounds of golf. But I was like, you know what? Durham Bulls, fun minor league uh, team. You know them from the movie Bull Durham. They play in that stadium still. They're down there right uh, right outside of Raleigh. And I was like, uh, let's go and got, uh, hop on the Game Time app and look for some tickets later on. Went ahead and got a great deal on some three rows off the field behind home plate tickets. I don't like the first row behind the field because I don't want to look like a loser when a foul ball comes back really fast and almost hits me in the head and I flinch like crazy. But three rows off, I like that. Plus, you got a better chance at a foul ball three rows off than one row off. Pro tip for you. But you can get any seats, whatever uh, your cup of coffee is. You can find it at game time because buying tickets to your favorite events shouldn't be stressful. And game time is a fast and easy way to buy tickets for all the sports, music, comedy, and theater near you. They got killer deals on last minute tickets and their best price guarantee. Uh, you can stop stressing over the tickets and start getting hyped for all the fun you're going to have. I mean, you don't have to plan months in advance, right? Uh, I'm going to this game Friday night, and that's even a little bit early when it comes to how game time is normally used. Like, you can do it up to, excuse me, up to the day of the event. You can get exclusive flash deals on tickets for football, basketball, baseball, concerts, comedy, theater, all that good stuff. And the game time guarantee means you're always going to get the best price. You get pictures of your seat before you buy, so you know exactly what to expect when you arrive. You buy tickets in a matter of seconds, a couple of taps, and it's all yours. And uh, they go right to your phone. You don't have to check through your email or anything or print anything out. No, no need for any of that. So snag the tickets without the stress of game time. Download the game time app, create an account, and use code Locked On MLB for twenty dollars off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account and redeem code Locked On MLB for twenty dollars off. Download Game Time today. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. All right, the Phillies and the Diamondbacks last night. Let's run through exactly how everything happened because there was plenty that happened in the game. The most important takeaway was that fifth starter spot and how that fifth spot in the rotation needs to get fixed. And the Phillies have a chance to bounce back again tonight, 9.40 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Phillies Diamondbacks go to the SiriusXM app and you can hear every pitch of the Phillies hometown radio broadcast of tonight's contest. Just go on the SXM app and search Phillies. Last night, Phillies fall 9-8 to eight to the Arizona Diamondbacks. Unfortunately, uh, did not get the job done. Got close there in the uh, ninth inning after being down. The Phillies were up big, then they went down pretty big, and then they come back. And it actually turned out to be a very, very entertaining game. A lot of interesting stuff from this one. But the first thing we're going to get into, JT Romuto was exceptional in this game. Uh, I'll just read you the stat line and see when you figure out. He went 4-4 four for four with a walk. He homered. He had uh, three RBIs. He had a triple. He had a double. And, yes, that other hit was indeed a single. JT Romuto hit for the cycle. He's the first Philadelphia Philly to do it since David Bell back in 2004, nearly 20 years ago. Crazy that the Phillies have gone that long without a cycle. This is the first one that I remember ever watching because back in 2004, I was eight, and you can kind of remember a little bit from uh, from that age. You start enjoying sports and understanding sports more, but you're not like zoned into every single Philadelphia Phillies game at eight years old uh, most times. So loved watching it last night. It was awesome, but I am kind of a little bit annoyed with JT Romito. And he had a great game. You know the funny thing about – JT's cycle is like three of those balls would have been home runs. This is Beck Park. They're playing out in Arizona, of course, where there's that deep gap in left center where JT kept hitting them. Uh, three of those would have been out. And instead, and I don't know what you'd rather have. If you're That would be an interesting question for a player. What would you rather have? Would you rather have a three home run game or would you rather have two of those hit off the wall and hit for the cycle? Uh, winning aside because I feel like if JT could go back to last night and say I'd rather hit all three out and we win the ball game. But uh yeah, an interesting thought. But bottom line is uh it was cool to see him hit for the cycle. His last one, the double, was like probably a foot from going out, which would have been super Philadelphia Phillies. It's like, oh you haven't had a cycle in 20 years. Okay, perfect. And it a tailor made double and it just sneaks out into the first row. So you miss it by hitting a home run. Like what a tease that would have been. Now uh, that might have given the Phillies an opportunity to win uh, late on in the game. But 
that is what it is. Great work by JT for the cycle. Uh, love that for him. What the Philadelphia Phillies did offensively, we'll just go through the uh, scoring flow of the game because they got up early. I mean, uh, the Diamondbacks led one nothing on Evan Longoria's sacrifice fly to left. But then JT Romito homered to right center in the top of the second, one to one. Romito tripled the center in the top of the third, three to one, two RBIs with Turner and Castellano scoring. Boehm had an RBI double, four to one in the top of the third. Uh, Josh Harrison hit an RBI single, five to one in the bottom of the third or top of the third. And then Harrison got thrown out on the bases. Seemed like he was kind of trying to draw a throw. Uh, said that uh, Alec Bohm, who scored on the play, was not going to have a play at the plate. So that's fine. I don't mind that. Five to one. Cool. Perfect. And then the bottom of the third, uh, a two RBI single uh, for Paven Smith leads to the Diamondbacks getting back into it. And that was only after Diamondbacks manager Tony Lavello exited the dugout after Corbett Carroll got hit for the second time in the game. Uh, he got hit for the second time in three innings. Two at-bats in a row he got hit. Now he's a lefty, and Matt Strom is a lefty who throws kind of sidearm. He throws like three quarters arm slot. So that's like right here for those of you watching on YouTube. Uh, and for people who throw like that hard from that arm slot, the ball kind of starts in on batters uh, that are the same hand as you. So a lefty pitcher will throw in on batters that are left handed. These aren't intentional. Like, why would you intentionally be trying to hit a guy in a 5 1 ball game? It, who, I don't know, didn't show you up. There's no beef there. I, there's no history between these teams. Like, there's absolutely nothing. And the second one that caused Lavello to leave the dugout was like a glancing blow off of his arm. Like, it wasn't like he smoked him. It was a little up and in, but it wasn't like – there was no chance of it getting his face. It was just kind of off the, like, forearm hand area. And it got a piece of him. He goes down to first base, and Lavello just starts screaming. Comes out like a madman. J.T. Romito goes over to talk to him as he's yelling at the umpire uh, about Matt Strom's pitch. And J.T.'s like, dude, it's the third inning of a 5-1 ball game. We have no reason to hit him. Like, just trying to go inside on a guy who's a really good hitter and lost it inside. Like, why would we ever intentionally in this spot do this? It just makes absolutely no sense whatsoever. And instead, Lavello loses his mind. He's, like, screaming at J.T. He gets ejected. Uh, he's yelling at JT, he's yelling at Matt Strom. All of a sudden, the bench is empty uh, because players are getting involved with yelling at the manager and everything. He's screaming at Kyle Schwarber. Like, Tony Lavello made himself look like such a darn loser last night by going out and screaming for no reason and acting like a baby because, what, a guy got hit twice in a game? Yeah, it's happened before. It's going to happen again. It's absolutely insane that he made as big of a deal out of it as he did. Like, that's crazy to me but he wanted to be a crybaby uh, and he wanted to yell at the umpires he got the rest of the night off for it but it did enough to wake up his team because like i said diamondback scored three in the bottom of the third they scored two more in the bottom of the fourth uh, on a rivera rbi single and a uh, corbin carroll rbi triple that dude's a great player uh five to five and then rivera hit a sacrifice fly to center to make it six to five off of dylan covey and then evan longoria homer to center uh 434 feet three-run home run, and it's 9-5, to five and the game fell over. Now, the Phillies scratched back into it. Harper had an RBI double in the top of the seventh to make it 6-9. to nine. Nice. Uh, Alec Bohm singled to right field uh, in the same inning to make it 7-9 to nine for Harper. And then the uh, Diamondbacks worked out of it there. And then the top of the ninth, Bryson Stott hit an RBI single uh, to right field to go ahead and score J.T. Romito after his cycle-achieving double. Made it 8-9, to nine, and how the game ended was painful. But Cody Clemens with two strikes on him. Ropes one down the right field line, sneaks out of that weird corner that they have in right and left in Chase Field. Uh, looks like it's gone. It's called gone on the field. He's rounding the bases. As he's rounding the bases, they kind of start conferring. They change the call to a foul ball. He scores. He enters into the dugout. They go and review it. It was clearly foul by like three feet. I don't know how you didn't see that as an official or as an umpire, I should say. Uh, but they didn't and called it a home run. So we got the worst tease of all time, thinking that, the Phillies had just taken the lead and you stayed up for it. Instead, no, he strikes out on the next pitch. And the ball game's over. It was a – I mean, if you are if you were a unaffected third party, like no dog in the fight, last night was probably an awesome baseball game. Being a Phillies fan, it sucked. Your team blew a big lead. You stayed up late because it's a West Coast game. You got the tees at the end, so you got your hopes up. You got to watch a cycle, which is cool, in a losing effort because the bullpen wasn't good enough. So, I mean, 
there are fun parts of it. There are not fun parts of it. But like I've always said, Philadelphia Phillies baseball, even when they lose, they're always entertaining. And last night, that was a heck of an entertaining game. Got another one tonight, 9.40 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Phillies take on the Diamondbacks again, game two of the series. Talk a little bit about that coming up. Uh, and you can listen to every pitch of the Phillies hometown radio broadcast of that game on the Sirius XM map. Just go ahead and search Phillies on the SXM app, and you can go ahead and pull that up. Coming up, we're going to just take a quick look at tonight's game, and we're also going to discuss the return of something from last year. We'll do that as we wrap up Locked on Phillies. All right, yes, so the Phillies take on the Diamondbacks again tonight. The pitching matchup. Uh, the Phillies are slightly favored. They're 50.7% favorites, according to the ESPN analytics. That's because they have Zach Wheeler going on the mound. Remember, this is the matchup of the Zachs. Wheeler versus Davies. Wheeler's got a 3.91 ERA and a 1.12 whip. Davies has a 4.68 ERA and a 1.44 whip. So, advantage Wheeler. I mean, Davies has only thrown 25 innings so far this season. Uh, and Wheeler's thrown 76 with 87 strikeouts. Uh, Davies is a gettable pitcher, a right-hander who you can get after, who's serviceable, but not anything that should really shut down the Phillies. So they'll have the opportunity to go out and have another nice offensive night, a nice one last night. Uh, we'll see how they go ahead and take care of everything. I believe Stott will be in the lineup tonight. He was off last night. I believe Marshall will be in the lineup tonight, off last night for Dalton Guthrie. That'll help the Philadelphia Phillies out with the righty on the mound for uh, Arizona uh, and an opportunity there. So we'll see how that plays out. You need to take two of four in Arizona. So even though you had a great opportunity last night, you don't face Gallon. You got through the bullpen game. They didn't win, but like it's behind us at least. So now you can watch starters throw again, and hopefully the starters continue to be as good as they were in the past couple series. So we'll watch that. But we got news today from Nick Castellanos via our uh, midday show on 97.5 The Fanatic. Anthony Gargano and Andrew Salchunas had Nick Castellanos on. Talk to him a little bit about the Phillies season so far and the turnaround. And he's told us that dancing on my own is back. They've started playing it in the clubhouse again. It's been added to the Philadelphia Phillies playlist that they listen to in the clubhouse. A lot of people are being weird about this. They're like, oh, leave that song last year, this, that, and the other thing. I hate that they brought the song back. They lost last year. The song doesn't work. It's corny, all this stuff. Guys, who cares if they listen to the song? Who cares what they listen to? They can listen to Mozart in the locker room if they want to, as long as the team wins. If they like it and they're feeling the mojo of last year and they want to channel that for this season, I mean, who am I to stop them? Who am I to complain about that? I like the song. I don't think it's as corny as some people are. I don't get tired of things like that, though. Like, I enjoy the little uh, type of niche. Not niche is not the right word. Um just those kind of little side baseball things like the home run hat and everything like that. Like I like those little celebrations and the little things that break up the monotony of 162 game season. So uh, dancing on my own is back. I don't know how you feel about it. Let me know in the comments if you're happy that the Phillies are bringing back that song, or uh, maybe you're like some of the people I saw on social media complaining about it, saying they should have left that song in the past. I don't know. Let me know. I want to get the, uh, the pulse of the fan base on that, but I don't mind it because it's for the players. It's not for the fans. It's not for the organization. It's just for literally those guys in that locker room, okay? They enjoy it. They like that song. They think there's some mojo with it. They're playing it again. We'll see if it works. They won seven of their last nine. If they win tonight, eight of their last ten, cool. We'll take that. So uh, we'll see. Good opportunity tonight for the Philadelphia Phillies. But that's all for today's episode of Locked on Phillies. Thank you so much for checking us out. Locked on Phillies, part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. Uh, so really, really appreciate that. And uh, make sure you're rating, reviewing, subscribing on the YouTube, all that good stuff. Still plenty of episodes to come this week about the Phillies West Coast road trip. And tomorrow we're going to be talking a little bit about uh, the second half of the series with the Diamondbacks and everything going on there. Hopefully we'll get some news about uh, what they're going to look at with the fifth starter spot. And hopefully we'll have a win to discuss all that fun stuff coming up. But that's all for today's episode of Locked on Phillies. And I will talk to you tomorrow.